Buddy Monkey Mike back here from Monkey Wrench in, and we're about to jump in the tin here because we ain't gonna get some bolts from the store and uh, it's right up the road. Why? I don't even know why I just put my key in the door. I don't, I don't think I've ever done that to this truck. That was weird. Cold start time. I haven't started this truck in about a week, so. Prime's up every time. Never gets old. Well, look at this. Side by side. Bunch of old dudes going to play. We're just coming back from playing one of the teams. They got manners, they all stopped. So, we are in the 10. We are headed up to go get some longer bolts. And, and just like that, we're here. True Value Hardware. This is where I like to come get my stuff. Let's go in and see if they have what we like. They've got the best selection in town. Usually they've got a good selection of metric and I'm trying, I mean, I don't care about the thread count being the same. What I do care about is that it's at least gonna be metric so that I only have to carry one tool set. I don't have like a random, random standard bolt inside Fosda. All right, let's go inside. All right, and just like that, we're done. We got what we need here in this little bag. Hopefully it's gonna match and be long enough. It's the longest bolts that they have in town. I don't think I'm gonna really find anything any longer. I may find something longer at the depot, but I don't believe it's gonna be grade eight. And because we are doing subframe stuff, I want it to be grade eight. So let's go ahead and get back home. And just like that, we are back. So let's get this crap in the garage, go see what the deal is. Hopefully they're long enough, because if not, probably gonna have to order them online and no that will be cheaper but it still means I gotta wait on more crap to show up and I hate waiting on stuff all right so in the middle of making these right here as you can see they don't fit I accidentally went a little too um, far out and which sucks because now we have less material on the outside here but that's not really what matters at this point um, they're kind of crooked as well <laughs> So I'm gonna try to fix that up and uh, get, take the Dremel to it just because it's gonna be a whole bunch easier. And uh, I'm not gonna film it because I'm gonna hold it with my foot and hopefully not Dremel my foot off. I've never done it before, but you know, today's a new day. So I'll be right back with that. Here it is, feet still intact. We live to see another day. And I almost straightened it out, look at that. Woo. All right, so. Oh yeah, see at least I do wear some of my safety protection. I mean, I got kids, so obviously at least, at least I wear it here. <laughs> Anyways, what's up everybody? Monkey Mike back here with Monkey Wrenching. Doing my best to keep this light from blinding you guys. I noticed the last couple videos I was actually sitting with it directly behind me and that's why the professional people use the umbrella craps and all that and I'm actually going to work into getting some better lighting in here that'll diffuse that stuff that way you're not looking directly at bulbs while I'm talking um, and we just get better light in general. I know one of my buddies from another channel actually sent me something really cool that'll be here soon. I can't wait to actually use that Apparently he uses it for mowing and it's it's bright enough He can mow his lawn in the dark with it and uh, it's something that we're gonna use here. So anyways uh, Today as you can see here, it's warm enough. I got shorts on. I mean it was like 60 degrees outside today We have a whole lot of spacing way too much for these bolts to handle I've got the subframe is completely disconnected on both sides right now. and It's free floating there's the bolts right there, or the nuts right there. I have those ones in holding it in place on that side, but this one here is completely empty. Uh, give me a moment, I'm gonna set up the tripod here and show you why those bolts are here today. Okay, so as you can see, before I get this set up, but this is underneath the transmission. It's underneath the transmission for very good reason. I wanna get this hooked up before I mess with it too much, and I wanna show you where we had it before and where we have it now and where I'm hoping to have it. I made these two smaller plates to add on. I showed you before where I spaced it out with the one quarter inch plate. 
Okay. Get this out of here. Set that here. Okay. So we have our one main quarter inch plate that we used the very first time. That worked out great. Right now, it is just being held up by the, by the weight of the springs. Okay, there's nothing else that's holding the subframe on. What I'm gonna do is take one of these, and because it's pretty much the exact points of contact there, we're gonna use that on the bottom. Then we're gonna take this one here, which faces this direction for some reason. I'm not sure if it really matters. We're gonna sit it in there. And then we're gonna take our top one, and we're gonna do exactly what I just called it, the top one. Now, as I said, this is free floating. This is the only amount, and I can just grab the chassis and kind of pull it up. And look at that. So, is it perfect? No, not at all. But what it is going to let us do with a little bit of work, this was my easier the first time I did it, I'm not going to lie. Bam! There it is. Okay, well, I got this side in over here. Um, I think I missed it all. I accidentally didn't record it. It's my fault. Genuinely my fault. This I time. jumped in this time. We're going to talk about this transmission right here. Now, I want to show you guys where it was sitting before. Where we had it before was up here. Let's see if I can get this tight enough for it to sit there. No. But anyways, do you see how high that is? I mean, that's, that's way up there. Okay, where we've got it now is down there significantly lower okay now that is hitting right there well here's a thought that i have is what if we bring the trans a little bit more forward so basically all i'm proposing is that right there just a little bit extra it gets everything away clears it real nice i don't have to trim anything else trans comes forward just slightly and i think the easiest way to achieve that is to just simply go back a little bit further on here, like when I went down the first time. Instead, we'll just go back and follow, we'll just follow the natural direction of how that was going in the first place. So part of something that happened here, and let's talk about exactly what happens when you push the subframe down, is on the back side, the, the chassis is gonna raise, the subframe is going to stay put because that's where the wheels are mounted to, okay? So everything that comes out to the suspension, only the struts here were the only thing that went up and down as far as the chassis and subframe are concerned. But really the thing I was worried about the most was this here, and it seems to be fine. The intermediate shaft doesn't seem to have any issues. You can see right here where that's the power steering fluid. I'm not gonna do it again just to show you guys quite yet. We'll wait until I can clean up more of my mess. Because the last time I went, you know, lock to lock on the wheels, I pumped a bunch of crap out. That's what that is. I have already tested this. The wheels move just fine. We've got some good grade 8 bolts in there. That's going to hold it tight. And realistically, the only thing I'd need to do is that tiny bit right there to move the trans just a, you know, a tiny little bit forward. And no material needs to be taken from down there. So that's likely the way that I'm going to go about it. And uh, I guess that's my big news for you guys today because this is a huge move in the right direction. And I'm just getting dirty. Once I do that and mount that in there, now that we have the motor mounts, uh, something about the motor mounts. I went back and I looked at the eBay sale. They were indeed the ones that I got. And I remember what happened as to why I got those ones versus the other ones that I thought that were triangle mounted. So these ones popped up. They were really, really cheap. And they were the same as all the other ones. They're just, you know, universal LS mounts. And um, I just grabbed them real quick. I and mean, even if they were junk, they're just for a mock-up to kind of get an idea of, of if my little beam chassis system thing's going to work. 
uh, which I do believe it will, but these were like almost half price of the other ones. They just went on like a really quick flash sale during the like Black Friday or Christmas time period and I just snatched them up. It was like three in the morning or something. eBay notification. Hey, do you want these? And I was like, oh, those are cheap. Okay. Phew. Name of the game. Everything I do is, is pretty budget oriented. So yeah, um, they're going to be fine though. I am going to be able to make them work. I have thought ahead about that. So that's okay. Thankfully it's metal. It can be cut. Those can be made into the triangles that I want. If I so desire those as I was complaining about, uh, I don't know, I guess I was just kind of whining. Anyways, this here though, we've got our subframe is spaced up all the way now. This is as high as the chassis is gonna get. Again, you know, that's a budget lift up front. That's that's way, way, way bigger gap. Look at that. Now even, I know there's no engine in there. We get an engine in there, it'll go down. And that's another thing too, is that I do believe the weight that I'm going to add up front may actually offset that little bit of lift I did. And it might actually put it back to like a stock ride height. Oh, yeah. That's why you don't do that barefoot and you won't get, oh, ow. Yeah, I got lots of metal shavings in my foot today. That Dremel sucks. Anyways, there you go, folks. Uh, there's today's video. It's just, we have it all spaced out now. Uh, I'll probably get that done today or tomorrow. I do have the homie Nick coming over tomorrow. We're gonna be working on his B18 swapped 90, 91 Integra. And uh, we need to do some maintenance on it, get a few things fixed up. And maybe even if we can get his little like remote or no, is it the RFID button start deal? Those are pretty savage. So hopefully we can get that installed for him. But for now, da, 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 for now, that's that. And the NRG quick release that is for the giveaway has arrived. So I will be doing the actual giveaway video announcement here soon. But for now, I'm gonna go pick some uh, metal shavings out of my foot. Y'all have a good night. Peace. I mean, really, just look how low that's sitting. That's uh, that's pretty pretty down in there. The chassis coming up on the back actually picked it up so it's angled more to the front. Like that's why I just want to pull it forward. I don't want it to come up at all. I just want it to go forward a little bit. Maybe we'll do a test fit. I think it's gonna sit pretty low. <laughs>